All right, grammar fans, you ready to level up your French? I'm ready when you are. This one goes out to our listener heading to Paris soon. They wrote in asking about, well, how to make their French a little spicier, less like textbook, more like, you know, actual conversation. Ooh, good one to unpack. And I think they specifically mentioned adverbs. They did. So we're diving into French adverbs, how to form them, where they go in a sentence, all that good stuff. I've got our notes here. And uh, I don't know about you, but this is bringing back some high school French class memories. Right. I remember looking at lists of adverbs and thinking, will I ever use all of these? But honestly, mastering adverbs is a game changer. They add so much nuance and personality to your speech. Totally. It's like you can get the basic meaning across without them, but adverbs are what make you sound like a natural. Exactly. And I think a good place to start is with the basics. How do we even form adverbs in French? Okay. So the way I remember it, it's pretty similar to English. You take the adjective and you add de mal, like we had Limley. You got it. That's the most common pattern and a great foundation. So if you have the adjective rapide, meaning fast, the adverb becomes rapidement, fastly. See, you're a natural. Aha, uh -huh, not quite. But this is making sense. But my notes, they say something about some adjectives being a little quirky. Ah, uh, yes. French wouldn't be French without a few exceptions. Right. right. What's the deal with these rule breakers? Okay, so take adjectives that end in ont or ont, like constant, for example. Instead of simply adding ont, they get a little swap. The NT becomes amont. So constant becomes constant perfect. Yeah. A small change, but it makes all the difference. These little patterns are so helpful. But there's more, isn't there? Some adverbs don't even use um on at all, right? Yep. Those are the real rebels, the irregular adverbs. And honestly, these are the ones that tripped me up the most when I was learning. I bet. They sound like real troublemakers. Any examples come to mind? Good. For example, it doesn't become bon mon. That's not even a word. It becomes bien. Oh, right. Bien. It's like they want to keep us on our toes. What about bad? Another great example. Bad becomes mal. No affament in sight. These are tricky. Any tips for remembering these irregulars? Honestly, flashcards, old school, but they work. Write the adjective on one side, the adverb on the other, and quiz yourself. Or even better, grab a language partner and practice together. Love it. Turning learning into a game. Okay, so we've got a ha handle on creating these adverbs, but where do they actually go in a sentence? Does it matter? It absolutely matters. Word order can really change the meaning of what you're trying to say. The good news is, though, French and English often follow similar patterns when it comes to adverb placement. Phew, at least there's some consistency. So tell me, what are the rules of the road here? Okay, so generally, if an adverb modifies an adjective or another adverb, it goes before the word it modifies, just like in English. So completely true would be complètement vrai. Makes sense. So like huh? very good would be très bien. Exactly. You're getting the hang of this. All right, I'm feeling good. What about adverbs with infinitives? Ah, good question. This is where things get a little more, shall we say, French. Remember, an infinitive is the base form of a verb, like to walk or to eat. Usually the adverb goes after the infinitive. Okay, so to walk quickly would be marcher rapidement. You got it. <laughs> mm. But, there's a but, of course. Negative adverbs like not always come before the infinitive. Ah, so that's why new pas marché means not to walk. The not sneaks in there. Exactly. Okay. French likes to be specific about negation. Good to know. Yeah. Now, what about those adverbs that modify the whole verb or even the entire sentence? Where do they go? This is where you have a bit of freedom. You can put them after the verb or before the whole clause. And this rule applies even with negatives. Interesting. So I've got options. You do. For example, I never did that could be jamais je ne fais cela or je n'ai jamais fait cela. Both are correct. Wow, that's fascinating. So it's all about the emphasis you want to create. Exactly. And that's the beauty of French. It allows for subtle nuances and emphasizes depending on your word choice and placement. This has been so helpful. So to sum it all up for our listener, when it comes to French adverbs, remembering the emote rule is key. But you got to watch out for those irregular rebels. And placement can be tricky, but a lot of the time, it mirrors English. Perfectly summarized. You've been a fantastic student. Well, I had a great teacher. But before we wrap up, I got to ask, are we missing anything? Any last bits of wisdom? Hmm. Well, we've talked about where adverbs go in a sentence, right? But how do you think tenses might affect adverb use? Like, would using the passé composé or imparfait change anything? Something to think about. Ooh, good one. Our listeners will have to wait for our deep dive on verb tenses. Thanks for all the adverb advice. Until next time. A bientôt.